Hey, my name's Mercedes. Welcome to Highlands Online. Whether it's your first time joining us or you're a regular here at Highlands, welcome. It's so good to have you. We'd love to hear from you on our Instagram or Facebook or via our website if you have any prayer requests or questions, or even if you just want to say hey. We hope you enjoyed today's message. Hey everyone, how are we going? So dramatic, isn't it? It's like a Taylor Swift concert, just ah. If the backup dancers come out now, no, I'll save that for the 10.30. <laughs> now, nah, well, hey, it's great to see you all here this morning. My name's Ben. I'm one of the pastors here uh, at Highlands, and uh, Ken stole a bit of my intro, so I can't do my big, big youth push, but it's just fantastic what we're seeing on a Friday with high schoolers. Uh, two small groups started on Friday, which is awesome. Uh, a kid came after his footy game just, just to get healing, literally. He's like just limping in. He's like, oh, Ben, can you pray for me? I'm like, you could have come two hours ago, but sure, I'll still pray. <laughs> but it's just great. There's an expectation. There's a hunger. Uh, not, not just in our high schools, I believe across our whole city. I really think God is doing something. He's stirring up something and uh, believing for our whole city, Toowoomba, Highfields, Gatton, Queensland, Australia, for Christ is not out of reach. Come on, I, I really do believe God can do it. And that is what we're here for, to believe, right? For Him to, to reach everyone, to reach our world and to use us as well. So I don't know, I'm, I'm just excited, I'm pumped up, it's great. But we are talking about heroes, right? Not Lockie on the big screen, but heroes in the Bible, right? We're looking at uh, the, the different heroes, different people that God has used, and whether it's them, whether it's us, right, it's what is God doing through us. And really, when, when, we, when we think of it, I don't know, we all might have a different idea of what a hero is, right? Right, maybe if you're like, well, Ben, you already mentioned my hero, Taylor Swift. I know, Richard, it's all good. Um, maybe you think of Marvel superheroes, knight in shining armor, like the, the very, um, what's the word, very fantastical side of heroes, right? Maybe for you, it's more of a, I don't know, steeped in realism, right? War heroes, people who've risen above, right? That's the word of what hero means to you. But generally, I, I, I think it, it always involves someone stepping, stepping up, right, stepping out, someone being bold and brave, right, standing there going, hey, we, we've gone through adversity, we're going to rise above, right? Everyone said they couldn't do it, right? The odds were stacked against them. Everything was not in their favor, yet they succeeded, right? That's the story we love, right? That's a good movie. We're like, yeah, awesome. You know, they're, they're down in the, in, the, in the second, and then all of a sudden, third act, they rise again, triumphant. The music comes in, the intro, the lights, very exciting, right? We love that sort of story. Who doesn't love that story? And who, who doesn't want that for themselves as well, right? Right, we so want to defy the odds, right? Be seen as the rescuer, the redeemer, the hero, right? We want to do that for ourselves. And I think when, when we look at life like that, when we go, I want to be the hero, I want to experience those things, right? I'm the underdog and I'm going to overcome. We, we, we sort of read that into the Bible, don't we? Right? We, we read the stories, we want to be the little David, right? that, that uh, everyone said to go back from the battlefield, yet was the one who defeated Goliath with a few stones. Right? We want to be the Moses, right? who came back from exile to part the Red Sea and to, to lead the Israelites through out of Egypt. Right? We want to be Joshua, who marches around Jericho, sees it fall. We want to be Gideon, right? who was the worst in his tribe, the worst tribe in Israel, yet led everyone to victory. Right? We read these stories and we go, yes, like God, would you do it through me as well? We want to be victorious over the giants in our own life. But you know, as we, we look at, again, what we view a hero as, as we even look at that going, well, what is my part to play in this? I think there is an error that we have played into. Right? Because we are so keen to overcome, because we're so keen to win, we maybe forget that as Christians as people that believe in Jesus, that follow him, that he is our savior, that maybe we forget that we are never actually meant to. That that's not our job, right? Because how is it we overcome? If we remember what, something, what it says in the Bible is we overcome through Christ. Right, it's not about me rising up. It's not about me defeating the adversity and, and, and sticking it to the man. No, no, it's about Jesus overcoming and winning, right? Romans 8, 37 says, overwhelming victory. Yes, Lord, we claim that. But no, it's ours through Christ. John 16 says, here on earth, you'll have many trials and sorrows, right? You'll go through things, but take heart. Why? Because I, because Jesus has overcome the world. 
And I think this is such a healthy reminder, and it's, it's sort of what I, I want to start from this point. I want us to spend a little bit of time remembering that Jesus is our hero, right? That he is the hero, not us. Not people, but it's Jesus. Because this is a healthy reminder I really do believe we need in life, right? Because as we're going through, as it says, these these trials and these sorrows and these things in life, is that we've got to remember that He is the hero, not us. Because when we start to look at being the hero, go, I will overcome, I will get through it, I will do it, we start to fall into the trap of going, well, I might not need God. I can do it myself. I can get through. I can do it. I'll be there. I believe that that's how we get to uh, one of the most repeated lines in the entirety of the Bible, which is, and the Israelites did what was wicked in the sight of the Lord. Right? As you read through Judges, you read through the Old Testament, we see that cycle of the Israelites getting to that point again and again of going, oh, maybe we can do this on our own. Maybe we don't need God leading us again. And then the Israelites did what was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And then they came back to God. Oh, thank you. You're our hero. You're fantastic. God, thank you so much. Oh, but I reckon we could do it ourselves this time, though. And it goes around and around and around again. And so we keep seeing that, right? We start to think we can do it in our own strength, by our own means. And I believe that's where we keep pushing the relevance of needing a Savior further and further away, right? Because why pray when I can just work harder, right? When I can provide. Maybe even for you, This could be the reason you find it hard to worship God, right? You might be standing here during worship going, I just don't understand why everyone is so into it, why everyone, this idea of surrender and I just don't feel the need. Well, maybe the reason you struggle to worship God is because you're not really certain what He's doing, right? Because if if, if there is no, like, God, you are my provider, but you're you're not the one working 40 hours a week, like, that's me, Right? If, if, if we find it hard to let go of these things, that again, he's not supplying my needs, that I, I'm not letting him be the Lord of my life, he's not actually directing me, well, yeah, then it, it probably is going to be hard to go, well, wh- why should I be singing these things? Like, I've never, I've never walked alone. Like, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm fine alone. Maybe I'm fine alone. Maybe I'm fine doing it on my own. We've got to remember that, again, it, it can't just be based on us, right? I can do it. I can get there. We know what it leads to, right? The Israelites did what was wicked in the sight of the Lord and life sucked for them until they came back to God and the cycle continued and continued, right? This is the reminder and I think it's just always good to come back to this is that God is our hero, right, church? God is my savior. He is my hero. I love what it says in um, Isaiah 64. It's a bit heavy, but it's just a good reminder, right? How can people like us be saved? We're all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they're nothing but filthy rags. Come on, even the best of what we bring is nothing compared to God, is nothing compared to what He can do and will do and has done for us. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sin sweeps us away like the wind. Again, this is in that time period. Yet no one calls on your name or pleads with you for mercy. Therefore, you've turned away from us and turned us over to our sins. Again, again, our best efforts, they're nothing compared to what He can do. They're nothing compared to Him. Now again, before we start to reflect on ourselves and, and all that, this is just, I just want that reminder that Jesus is Lord, that He has saved us, that nothing we can do can ever earn, that nothing we can do makes it like, oh, we got pretty close. No, no, it's all Him. It's all Jesus. And this isn't the beat down of the we all suck, we're all terrible. It's just that that healthier reminder that Christ is above, that Christ needs to be exalted and lifted up. Because that's the beauty in it. While the Israelites did what was evil on the side of the Lord is very repetitive, so is, and the Israelites cried out to God and He answered. Is that as much as we might turn away from Him, as much as we might try and be the hero in our own story, it is always just, and then we can get back to God. And we turn back to Him and He is always there. He is always ready again to lift us up, always ready to work in your life, to bring healing, to bring miracles, to bring the passion and joy and everything in life that you are meant to have. So while it might be that, yes, we can keep turning away, it is always easy to go back to Him and have that reminder that He is the miracle maker, He is the rescuer, He is the redeemer. Right, Romans 10, where everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 
Come on, if you feel so far away from God, you feel it impossible for him to heal your life, to turn your life around, to, to, to surrender maybe even to him going, well, that, I'm, I've got a family to look after. That's a big thing to, to let go of. All it takes is just calling on his name. All it takes is calling on his name. So knowing where we fit in the story is very important. Again, what it means, again, in the kingdom of God, knowing who we are and who He is, is so important, right? Whether you see yourself as the underdog, the one who needs to overcome and get through, do it on your own strength, buy your bootstraps, fantastic. Or maybe you view yourself the complete opposite, where you are the damsel in distress, helpless, I can't do anything, only Jesus, right? Whichever side you might fall on, I believe it's, it's all missing the mark a little bit of who God says you are. And I want to use a a particular story today from the Bible, from the Old Testament, of some of the lesser known heroes that I believe there is some gold in. Like uh, there is so much gold in it for where we fit in the kingdom of God. And and really, this was actually going to be the intro to my preach. I I, I started going through, oh, that'll be a nice little one. I'll I'll mention that then get to the the meat, get to Nehemiah. I love Nehemiah. That's a good one. But I just kept going and going, I don't think I can fit this in. I've just got to stick to this. It is such a powerful reminder of who we are and who God is, right? This is the story of Deborah and Barak, right? It's in Judges 6, right? That's all it is. Now, if you've been here the last few weeks, where this picks up is this is about a century before Gideon, right? Doug preached on this two weeks ago, right? It's about a century before Gideon. And yet again, Israel is trying to overcome on their own. They're trying to do it again because they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, I love looking into this. There's a guy called Barry Webb who did a bit of a commentary on on this period. Again, the cycle of Israel going, we follow God, we don't follow God. We follow God, we don't follow God. And I love what he said, is that this makes it clear that apostasy has set in from the time of Ehud's death. That's just, you got to read that story. That's a cool one, Judges 5, but that's not today. He said this victory had brought temporary relief but no change in Israel's spiritual condition. And I just think that's a great maybe pause for reflection there of that's something we've experienced, isn't it? Or maybe you have experienced it, is you're, you're experiencing temporary relief from God, but the spiritual condition isn't changing. Where you get that, 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 that temporary relief, oh, God healed me, oh, I had a miracle, oh, I just, I felt His presence, or I had a prayer answered, sweet. But then the spiritual conditioning, the soil of your life is not changing, and so you keep reaping the same fruit. I, I, I was talking to one of our youth, youth kids before we went to our big camp, right? And that's a, it's a camp where kids encounter God. It's fantastic. There's so much faith in the room. But he asked me, and he, he said, well, why is it that people walk away from God after they encounter Him? And that's sort of where you go, like, it, it's just so common, Right? How can people walk away? Well, it's quite easy because deliverance is only half the battle, right? We have a big moment, woohoo, this is great. But again, if we don't change what's in here, if we don't change that I will follow you, God, which means I need to walk a different way, which means I need to surround myself with a community that's going to lift me up, right? Because sin is just as tempting after an encounter with God, isn't it? Right? That we can keep going that way. We can keep falling down that pattern. So we've got to change the spiritual temptation of our life. And I I just, uh, sorry, uh, the the spiritual condition of our life. But I think that's just such an interesting thing of going, maybe you've experienced that deliverance before, but you're like, why hasn't my life changed? Well, I I believe it's because we need to, again, come back to God and follow Him, not not just seek the big moment, not just seek the exciting stuff. So that is where Israel currently is, right? That's why we keep seeing that cycle. But this is where the story of Deborah and Barak picks up. And that there's four things, I believe, from this that we can look at and going will help us understand who God is and who we are and how that is the best thing for us to understand so then we know what we can do and should do. So we're going to just read through it. It's not super long. And then I want to sort of pick it apart a bit. Is that good? Great. Fantastic. So again, Judges 4.1. After Ehud's death, The Israelites again did evil in the sight of the Lord. Fantastic. So the Lord turned them over to King Jabin of Hazor, a Canaanite king. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harasheth. Sisera, who had 900 iron chariots, ruthlessly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help. All right, we skip ahead to verse 6. One day Deborah, who was a prophet, the judge, sent for Barak, son of Abinom, who lived in Kadesh in the land of Naphtali. 
Tough one. She said to him, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel commands you. Call out 10,000 warriors from all the tribes and meet at Mount Tabor. I will call out Sisera, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors to the Kishon River. There I will give you victory over him. Barak told her, I will go, but only if you go with me. Very well, she replied. I'll go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. Verse 14. Then Deborah said to Barak, get ready. So they're about to go into battle. This is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera for the Lord is marching ahead of you. So Barak led his 10,000 warriors down the slopes of Mount Tabor into battle. When Barak attacked, the Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots and warriors into a panic. Sisera leapt down from his chariot, escaped on foot. Then Barak, uh, Barak chased the chariots and the enemy army all the way to Harasheth, killing all of Sisera's warriors. Not a single one was left alive. Verse 17, meanwhile, Sisera ran to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, because they were on friendly terms with King Jabin. Jabin, Jabin. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, come into my tent, sir, don't be afraid. So he went into her tent, she covered him with a blanket. Please give me some water, he said, I'm thirsty. So she gave him some milk from a leather bag, covered him again. Stand at the door of the tent, he told her, if anyone comes in and asks you if there is anyone here, say no, so he's hiding. Right? But when Sisera fell asleep from exhaustion, Jael quietly crept up to him with a hammer and a tent peg in her hand, and she drove the tent peg through his temple and into the ground. And so he died. <laughs> Just in case we need a doctor to check, like, get a pot. Mm, no, he's definitely dead. Okay, thanks for the clarification. When Barak came looking for Sisera, Jael went out to meet him and she said, come and I will show you the man you are looking for. So he followed her into the tent and found Sisera lying there dead with a ten peg through his temple. Honestly, this is just one of those fun ones. I'm like, man, I'd love to preach on this one. And thankfully, Jesus also brought some great revelation through. So two for two, that's fantastic. But we, we've got a few people in this story, right? There's a few people in this story. And again, maybe how do you read yourself into it, right, as the hero? How, where do we fit into this? How, how is God highlighting something to us? Because the, the Word of God is alive and moving, right? So God is revealing stuff to us. Right, so we've got Deborah the prophet, who is the, the judge for God, bringing clarity and declaration. Got Barak, right, called by God, the muscle, the leader of the army. Got Jael, the secret weapon, tent peg, very cool party trick. Uh, and Sisera, right? Now, now, surely we're not the bad guy. Don't worry, I'm not, I'm not pulling a, a 180 on everyone. Oh, you got Sisera, you're the evil one. Right, but how you read this story, it will determine what you see. It will determine, really, again, how you see yourself and how God sees you as well. And I, I do believe that in this, there's a clear answer to that of who God is and who we are. So I want, I want to look at this as really, yeah, four things that we can take away from this moment that highlight it. Right, so number one, number one, we can look at this going, in our relationship with God, how do you respond? How do you respond? Because just like Deborah called Barak saying, hey, I'm, I'm, God is calling you, let me give you this instruction, so too, we are called into a battle every day, right? It might not be meeting under a tree and having to command an army of 10,000, but well, you know what your world looks like. You know what your mission field looks like, right? People in your, your sphere of influence, your life, the, again, our city, if you're looking for an easy one, there's many people out there that need the hope of Christ and we are meant to be that light. Now, more often than not, we respond just like Barak did, where he said in Judges 6, I will go but only if you'll go with me, right? Now, not, not an uncommon, oh, sorry, it, it is an uncommon response for a commander, but not necessarily an uncommon response for us, right? Where we want a little bit more reassurance, right? Just a little bit more like, oh, I don't know, I am scared, I am uncertain. Like, God, give me a bigger sign and then I'll do it. Like, if you really want me to talk to my, my people at work about you, God, I don't know, give me green lights all the way, to work or something like, show me a sign, right? We, we sort of, we ask these things. And, and the point in this is not that that is bad, okay? I'm not saying it's bad that we need a bit, bit more, like we, we, we really want to be certain about this stuff. Because what, what I think is important in this, again, how do you respond, is any step is better than no step. Honestly, any step is better than no step. Because this is the thing, we go like, oh, silly Barack, like, oh, he needed Deborah to hold his hand the whole way there. Wow, terrible. But as this was remembered through the Bible, is, is Barak is still remembered thousands of years later as a hero of faith. 
Again, he wasn't a, oh, this is the one to watch out for. No, in, in Hebrews, it, it's going to be on the screen there, but it says this, is that it would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of David, of Samuel. So he's up there. Okay, he's, he's not the, the footnote of going, oh, this guy wasn't that great. He didn't have enough faith. Terrible him. No, he is still remembered. Said this, that again, they shut the mouths of lion. They quenched the fl- fires of fl- flames of fire. Escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. See, Barak's story is not one about his confidence or his actions. Barak's story is one about obedience, of saying yes to God, right? Even though it's shaky faith, it's still faith. It's still saying yes, right? We've got to make sure, so for us, that again, how do you respond? We don't get so overwhelmed with the task, right? So overwhelmed that we never start it, right? We've got to be like, again, if you were here two weeks ago, Gideon, who snuck away in the dead of night because he was scared, but he still did it. Right, Barak asked for a friend to help. Peter, oh, he sunk. He still walked on water. Like that's, I haven't done that. That's pretty impressive. See, it is all about your response because it's all about what God wants to do through you. So say yes, church. Whatever God is calling you to do, wherever he's calling you to go, say yes. And you can be uncertain. You can be terrified, but still say yes. And the reason we can say yes is point number two. How does God respond? Right? So there's how we respond, but how does God respond as well? Because remember, He is the hero. We started with that and it's going to go all the way through. He is the hero. This is not a story about, of Israel rising up, realizing the power of friendship was inside them all along and that's how we overcome. No, no, it was all about God did. God delivered them. He brought victory. Again, remember, how how many chariots did Sisera have? 900 iron chariots. Why is that impressive? Because Israel probably had zero. (laughs) They didn't even have it. it, If you look through it, Israel didn't even have a standing army at the time. So these 10,000 warriors they brought, they were were voluntary. They were just like, all right, time to grab your pitchforks, grab your torches, come along, right? This wasn't like, all right, we're enlisting the army to this. They didn't have it, right? So there was zero advantage for the Israelites, they were all non-professional volunteers. So God was not using an army superpower. He, was, he wasn't using Barak's tactical brain who could think of all these things. And No, no, just God was using their obedience. And then he delivered. Right? Remember, what did it say in, in Judges, where it went through? This is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera. He will give you victory. He is marching ahead of you. And then it goes through and said, the Lord threw Sisera and his chariots and his warriors into panic. God did that. There's a great um, commentary, and author Franklin Lindsay talked about it like this, saying that the means used by God were both human and divine. And again, that's much of our life, is that there, there needs to be a human element, there needs to be an element where I am doing something, I'm putting my hand to the sword, but God is the one delivering. Now, it's not mentioned in Judges 4 as the story goes on, but in Judges 5, it, it'll be on the screen behind me, but Really, Judges 5, the song of victory about this goes on to say that essentially God brought a flood, right? He brought the Kishon River, swept them all away and and made those 900 chariots useless, worthless, right? That's how the victory was won because look how God delivered. So how does God respond? Well, He responds with miracles. And church, we need to be expectant for miracles. This is, man, what I want to hit hard. We need to be expectant for miracles. This is not the time for us to be sitting there going, oh, I trust in the hope and reason of Christ and the facts and statistics of, no. Come on, miracles, exceedingly and abundantly more. God, when when we pray for God, are you believing for the impossible? Are you believing for the 900 iron chariots to be swept away? Where again, in your own strength, that would have been a very short battle, a very terrible battle, right? But in God, Right in God. I just realized my son is in my pocket the whole time. I didn't even realize. It's terrible. <laughs> See, we can't just pray that God ties up our problems with a nice little bow. We've got to have faith. Right? When, when we pray, right, we're not praying as we say to Woomba for Christ, going, Oh God, would you bring 2% growth every year? Would you follow my statistical sheet on Excel that, Lord, we will see a revival in 2099 as it trends upwards? In Jesus' name. 
No, come on, we're believing that it would happen next service. We're believing that the Holy Spirit will sweep through our city and that people will come running saying, what must I do to be saved? That prodigals are coming home, calling parents saying, I think I need to come back to God. Right, that's what we believe for. Come on, as we pray for the sick, we're not just saying, oh God, will you stir the antibodies inside of us and that, so that naturally I heal from the sniffles in a couple of weeks. No, we say be healed in the name of Jesus. By His stripes, we are healed. Come on, if, you, if you've experienced that, if you've had to pray for a, a loved one, a sick one, well, well, you're not just praying that it just happens and oh, that would be great if in a couple of years. No, it's like, God, do something miraculous because that is how God responds. See, our response may have fear and hesitation, but can I actually encourage you in that? Good, because you're obviously believing for something that is impossible. Whereas, well, God, I am terrified to ask that. I am terrified to step out in that because in my own strength, right, the human intervention, that should be impossible. But God, how you respond is the divine. How you respond is the divine power. And really that it's only God could deliver this. So we know how we're meant to respond. We look at how God responds but the third, the third point from this is watch what God delivers. And this is the point that I, I've slept on for years as I've read through this, read through the stories, get to Gideon, fantastic. But I love it because God delivers victory on a silver platter or a silver tent peg. But again, we remember that's what happened, right? Sisera, the commander, right? the leader of this army runs away, goes to, again, his ally, his ally, Oh, you can keep me safe. Fantastic. Nope. Bang. <laughs> and this is the point where, as I was, and this was, this came from, I was just reading through this and God just hit me with it. This is where unequivocally we are Barak in the story. Right? We are Barak in the story. We walk in and we just find victory there for us. It has been delivered to us. God delivers us victory at the hands of a Savior. Man, when I read that, I just felt this. Man, what a fantastic picture of Jesus, really. We walk into a tent and there Jesus is, enemy on the ground, tent peg in the ground saying, here you go. We can't, we can't earn our salvation. We can't earn our forgiveness. Again, we can't do it on our own. Yet as we follow Him, as we surrender to Him, as we give Him our lives and He is our hero, who wins the battle? Not us, not my army of 10,000, not even the, the, the sweeping waters that took the chariots away. No, right there, Jesus is going, I have overcome. I have done it. I have won. Come on, no matter what you are facing, no matter what goes on in life, it's not due to our stress and our striving that we can win. It is by our hero. Again, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ. Come on, if you are obedient, if you allow Him to use you, He will deliver on what He promises. Come on, we can't rely on the little, the little, the little gods we build up ourselves, our little securities, our little, I've got to hustle hard and work hard and do this myself. No, we need to keep coming back to Him. It's important how we see God. Do you see God as that hero, as that one who will deliver for you? Do you sit there on your hands with bated breath going, oh, geez, I hope God comes through. Oh, I, I hope that prayer gets answered. No, or are we expectant of like, oh, when God rolls into town, here we go. Something's about to shift. Something's about to change. Not going if He comes through, how He does. I was reading something, an author called John Whitmer. He describes the, a relationship with God very much like this, and it's, it's a bit wordy, but I think you'll keep up. He says this, to discuss the goal of sanctification, which is a believer's hope, which he awaits eagerly and steadfastly, is pointless unless realizing that goal is certain. God provided that certainty and confirms the believer's hope since sanctification from its beginning and regeneration to its completion and glorification is ultimately God's work. A lot of big words. Which believers appropriate by their faith. But I just want us to get that of, again, our, our hope in God is pointless unless realizing that goal is certain. Come on, unless we go, no, God is going to overcome. God is going to come through. And then we appropriate that through our faith. Again, all those big words essentially means that the God will certainly be the hero and we see that through our faith. He is ready to move. He is ready to save. He is ready to heal. So do we match that with our prayers? 
Again, are we just praying for a nice little, oh great, the Excel spreadsheet says this, so if we just keep seeing it naturally, great. Or are we believing for the impossible from God that He will deliver? Come on, are we just hoping one day to be saved? Or again, do we see God rolling into town, the hero rocks up and going, oh man, these bad guys are gonna be in for trouble right now because I know who my God is and I know how He answers my prayer and that is not good for the enemy. And this comes to the last point that I wanna end on because we've gone how we respond, how God responds, watch Him deliver. But I want us to remember, I want you to know and remember and walk away with this, that God is the hero, but that doesn't mean you are useless. Okay, again, I said, we aren't the hero, but I also think, I don't think we are meant to be the damsel in dresses just fainting around going, oh, would you just pick me up, Jesus? See, we realise we aren't King David. We realise we aren't Gideon. We realise we aren't Moses. But again, we're not meant to just sit around and be carried. Once the hero arrives, it inspires action. I'll jump to a different story. When, when David slayed Goliath, right? Oh, well, I'm not the little boy doing rocks. Well, what, what am I doing? Well, I love this. It says this, when the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah surged forward with a shout and pursued the Philistines. The dead were strewn along the road. See, this was the same army that was terrified at Goliath, afraid, going, oh, what are we gonna do? But come on, as soon as the hero came in, their faith rose. They go, actually, we can do this. Actually, victory is mine. So we are meant to just sit there and polite golf clap it. Woo, good throw, David. No, we are meant to follow and go, no, actually now I can, no, I do. I will overcome because I've got my hero with me. Come on, we are meant to keep pushing forward. Confidence should return. I talked before about in Judges, Judges 5, the, the thing about the Kishon uh, River flooding them away. That, that is actually the first recorded, or one of the earliest recorded pieces of poetry in the Old Testament. It's a song of victory, a hymn of victory. All right, maybe it's important that we sing our praises to God. Again, maybe you're sitting there struggling to engage in worship. I don't know why I should praise God What uh, uh, to surrender to Him. Well, this is the reminder of going, just praise Him for how good He is. Again, for how victorious He has been, for how victorious He will be. Remember, again, if it was needed then, it's still needed today to remind ourselves of what our hero did. He overcome. But what I love in that as well is the interesting thing is, again, who the focus is on. Because there's plenty in that about what God did, but also it's not a, again, silly Barak, like this is no good, the honour was taken away from you. But as I was reading through this, it, it talked about, it pays tributes to those individuals and tribes who valiantly played their part. They still took it on, right? They were still remembered saying, God, we followed you. We said yes to you and you reminded us of our confidence and our strength in you. So we went to action, we went to work. So church, stop cutting yourself short. Oh, I could never. Oh, I don't think that's for me. Oh, Tuma for Christ is a bit ambitious, isn't it? Come on, stop cutting yourself short. If the hero is with you, come on, you can't overcome, you will overcome. We've got to remember that again. You're gonna overcome with power. I hate the line of, oh, if I can't give any, if I can't give everything, I won't give anything. I don't wanna, I just, I just wanna give my best and if I can't, I just won't. That's rubbish. We gotta, we gotta get rid of those examples. Because Jesus says you only need faith the size of a mustard seed. So again, what faith do you have? What steps can you take? Just start going, yes, Lord, because I know who I am and I need to be obedient. And I know who you are and you are going to deliver me. And you are gonna bring, again, all of it because you are the hero. So God, I will just say, yes, the criteria is faith, church. So use your faith for your world. Come on, because if, if he could use a woman like Deborah, that was important. If he would use a scaredy cat like Barak, that's important. If he would use a non-Israelite, JL, to deliver, come on, would he not use you? Does he not want to use you? Is he not waiting for you just to say yes? Is he not waiting for you to just with a prayer go, God, would you do something bigger than my own strength? God, would you do something outside of my control? Would you do the impossible? I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know if, God, I just know that this is your heart. So God, I'm gonna pray it. I'm gonna start believing it and taking steps of faith. 
This is how we start to approach the throne of God boldly, church. Again, probably not very boldly, but just starting. Going, God, it is your will, so I will pray it. God, it is your desire, so I will pray it. It is needed, so I will pray it. And then whatever you're asking me to do, I'll take a step. I'll start doing it. I'll be more bold in my faith. I'll be more bold in my prayers. I'll be more open to the Holy Spirit in any conversation in the world around me. Because God, I know how you will respond. It's not about me doing it. It's just about me saying yes to Him. So church today, just that is the encouragement. He is your hero. He is your overcomer. And whatever you need to say yes to into regards to that, come on, there is victory on the other side in Him and nothing else, church. Come on, why don't we pray? God, I thank You that You are our hero. Lord, in all, in everything, every, every private battle, every personal battle, You are our hero. And Lord, we just take a moment to say thank You. We just take a moment to praise You and just say thank You for dying for me. Thank You for paying the price for my sin. Thank You for believing in me and picking me up and setting my feet on solid ground. I could never do that on my own. We could never overcome our sin, our temptation, our, our, where we fall short. That's all You. So God, we thank You for that. And Lord, I pray You stir up the areas where we need to say yes. Maybe we've been trying to be the hero ourselves and it's time to lay it down at the foot of your cross saying, God, this is actually your battle. I'm just gonna be obedient to where you tell me to go instead of always trying to be the provider, always trying to be the one. God, if it's we've been sitting around just waiting for you to deliver it to us right there and now, God. Come on, we know we've got a part to play. Lord, stir us to action. God, even in this room, there might be people that need to say yes to you being the hero. You, you're, you're standing in that tent. We've got to walk in. Maybe you've never said yes to Jesus before. You've never accept, actually said, be my hero, be my saviour. Help me, save me. Come on, if you need to make that decision right now, if you need to be the one to say, God, I actually just need you to be my hero. Again, call on the name of the Lord and be saved. It's that easy. So if you need to do that, if you need to say, God, be my saviour. This is your moment right now. So while everyone is praying, everyone's eyes are closed, your decision, if you need him to be your saviour, I just want you to raise your hand saying, Ben, that's me, so I know who to pray for. Is there anyone who needs to say, Jesus, be my saviour, be my hero. That's awesome. God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for who you are. I thank you, Lord, that you are our hero, our saviour. Lord, we give our battles to you. And thank you, Lord, that you will deliver. Lord, that we will see victory in our lives as we hand over to you. We trust you, God. We thank you, Lord, Lord that your heart is for our world, our nation to be saved. We thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's message. If this message did impact you and you gave your life to Jesus, we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to help you in this new step in your journey. So please message us on Facebook or Instagram or by our website. We hope to see you again soon.